Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Mary and I am bringing you our 11th day. So we only have two more days today and tomorrow of the 12 days of Christmas. And I'm going to start it off, of course, with the 12 days of masking. And these are by my beauty spot. So let's go ahead and get date 11. And I'm actually going to enjoy this one. And this is a very interesting calendar that I chose. The masks have been simply amazing. They have all been cream based. Uh, some of them are more of a cream water gel type consistency. But each and every single one of them, I have loved how my skin feels after. So here we go. And if I can find my scissors, that would be cool. And I have cut it. And today we are going to talk about Levi jeans, denim pant and jacket suits, and bell bottoms. Yes. I did talk earlier in the week about bonfires and um, back in the day when I was a teenager and those were in the 80s. Well, I'm going to take it a little further back to when I was around 12, which was a memorable age. I can still remember so much of what was going on when I was 12 the clothing. The clothing was simply amazing. And most of the times when we got Levi jeans, because Levi jeans were the thing back then, the main, main thing, they were really nice pants. They still are. They have come up with so many different numbers now. Back then it was the Levi's, just plain Levi's. I don't even remember if they had a number. And then we had the 501s, which were my absolute favorite. Those were towards the end of the 70s, I believe. I hope I didn't take it into the 80s, but I'm trying to stay within the 70s. But the 501s were by far my favorite pair of jeans. Now back then, the flare on the pants, the bell bottom, the bigger the bell, the better the pant. Or at least that's what many of us thought. Well, with me, we would get one pair of jeans a year. That is it. That is what we could afford. One pair of jeans a year, and that was for the beginning of school. Anything after that, my grandmother would make for us. So they at least gave us the opportunity of getting a pair of Levi's. Now, mind you, I love the suits that my grandma used to make for us because she used that, um, it was like very, very light blue denim that she used. And many of you, I'm pretty sure you'll remember what I'm talking about. They had the square pockets in the front. They had the jacket that had the matching pockets in the front and it was just simply amazing you wore it with either a turtleneck a t-shirt your jacket and your pants and back then the the shoes I used to get a pair of shoes in Mexico they were the most comfortable shoes ever they were super expensive back then they are still expensive now but they were actually a name brand in Mexico and they were called Canada shoes Canada and they were super comfortable, absolutely comfortable. Everyone wanted to have those shoes and not everybody went to Mexico, but every year my aunt and my grandma would buy us those type of shoes every single year. We had at least two of those pairs a year, beginning of school and then when the summer began. So we were a lot more careful with our shoes back then because we knew we had to be. And I'm going to leave it at that and get to calendar number two now that I've cleaned off the cream from my hands. 
And I didn't even tell you what that mask was. I got straight into the talk, didn't I? Throwback Thursday. That is what this is today. Okay, so collagen essence face mask and this one plumps and smooths. So let's see how plumpy, not that I'm not already plumpy, but how much more plump it can give my face. So the next calendar is the 12 days of Grinchmas and we, like I said, are doing day number 11. And that is getting to the end of these calendars, which I'm going to miss, by the way. And now we're gonna have cinnamon. And cinnamon is one of my favorite, favorite scents, as well as spice that you can add to anything. I put cinnamon even in my coffee. I add a little touch of salt, very little, not too much, and the cinnamon to the coffee grounds and it gives it an amazing taste. I do that. I kind of got a lot of the people at work uh, hooked on it so now they make the coffee that way um, but don't add too much cinnamon. Too much cinnamon is going to give you some better coffee because that's what it does but just the right amount not too much not too little and it will give you that hint of cinnamon the salt is what helps bring down the bitterness of the coffee and the cinnamon and holds it, um, gets it to hold. So that is one of the things that I absolutely love about it, is that the salt is known for capturing and keeping flavors in. And that is what I do with coffee and cinnamon. So here we go. Here we go, so we've got that. And that is helping families changing lives. This is one of the work cups. I know I've shown it several times, but that's what we do. One family at a time, actually one child at a time, one family at a time, one day at a time. So let's try this. Perfect touch of cinnamon. It is delicious. I have never tried hot chocolate with cinnamon. Well, I did now, and it's not too bad. I actually like it. So let's go ahead and get back to our 70s talk. The bell bottoms. Now the bell bottoms, they the bigger the bell, of course, the better the, the pant, and the bell had to cover your entire shoe. So they had to reach the ground and they had to cover your shoes. That's when you knew you had an authentic, full blown, in style bell bottom. That was what we did. The creasing of the line for the jeans. We don't do that anymore. I don't see very many people. There's one person that continues to do that with whatever pant he's wearing, whether it's a slack, a pair of jeans, whatever, and that is my brother. My brother, since he was probably 12, would always, always crease his pants with starch. Always. He always had that very, very sharp, thin line on his pants. He still does. I don't know if he uses starch anymore, but he still makes that very sharp line. So I know off topic, we're moved into the 80s. But back to the 70s, that line was the ultimate. You had to have it. If you did not have that line, that meant you were lazy. You were not ironing your clothes. And you could not be caught out there without ironing your clothes. Now, music, all of that stuff, the music from the late 70s is something that I still play now. I absolutely love it. I play a lot of the old music. 80s is my all-time favorite. 80s rock, that is by far my favorite as far as modern music goes. But my number one, number one music genre is praise and worship, obviously. But, but going back, back in the 70s, late 70s, 
like I said, I was 12. We used to not wear shoes a lot. And I still to this day wish I could not have to wear shoes. But I will only do it on carpet. I won't do it on floor. Hitting the cold floor. And I know a lot of people think it's superstition. But for me, I don't know if it's mind over matter or what. But the minute I step on a cold floor, I will absolutely develop a throat. A sore throat. Every single time. So I always try to keep flip-flops or uh, just house shoes on at all times or socks because I don't need to touch the cold floor. But back then, shoes were non-existent for most of us kids. At least they were in the group of kids that I ran with. When we were sent to the store, we would go from shadow spot to shadow spot and run to get to the shadow spot because the concrete was so hot that we didn't want to burn our feet, but we'd look for the shadow spots and that's how we went to the store. Put your shoes on go to the store come back take them off and be done no we had to do it that way if you didn't do it that way then you were considered a wimp that's what we called each other and i know nowadays it's a lot of the bullying talk which back then probably was as well it was not as big a deal and people were not offended as easily so we always called each other those names but nobody took it offensive and nobody fought over those names. And that was just a, it was just a fun, fun, fun time for me. Um, but then we hit Colorado. In Colorado, we got there in 79. And it was, it was heaven for me. Because Colorado is one of those places that is simply amazing that is when I was introduced to just a lot of different type of rock music in the 70s I got to meet a lot of people not that El Paso didn't have them but they didn't have them as much because it was more of a western type town or city whereas Colorado was more diverse and in Colorado I met a lot a lot of people that had their colorful um, I'm trying to think of the name oh my lord I lost my train of thought I had to log off and look it up I don't know why I had the name right at the tip of my tongue and lost it hippies hippies is what I ran into a lot of the super colorful clothing their vests that were super colorful their constant peace or dude and to me that was so enticing all the big flowers that they had on their clothing the flowers on their flared up jeans for me that was a different type of um experience but it was fabulous it was amazing so that was what my 70s late 70s looked like as far as i can remember and it was a fun time what are your memories? If you happen to have experienced the 70s, what are your memories about the 70s? What did you do for fun? Uh, what did you do for just to hang out with people and friends? Where did you go? We went to the lakes, the parks, the rivers, the mountains. That's where we spent most of our times. And like I said, loads and loads of fun. So let me know down below in the comment section what you did for fun, and what's your best memory from the 70s. Thank you all for joining me. I greatly appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay blessed, smile always. Bye.